self-development with tactics. So today we're going to talk about being disagreeable and or agreeable, you know, in terms of character traits, in terms of personality traits, which is something that I am just assuming right now is kind of popularized by or was popularized by Jordan Peterson. And I've kind of uh, really dug into that, you know, the whole uh, things that, that he's talking about um even though, of course, I mean, there is there is definitely some things that I'm not agreeing with. I mean, uh, his polit- uh, political, well, assumptions and thoughts and um, perspectives definitely don't pretty much match mine. But I think that he is definitely a very interesting person. Um, also, uh, considering his verbal skills, like it is amazing, and I think that. It's, you know, it really got me into a place where I believe that being able to express yourself in a really good way, in a way that people can understand you is one of the most important things there is because, because yeah, it just is, you know, um, I don't know, like we all have ideas, we all have thoughts and we all have some things that we, uh, we would like to share, but if you were then unable to express these things and um, articulate them. Of course, we all have thoughts, but speaking is something completely different than thinking. Of course, these things that you're thinking about make sense to you, but uh, to make them able to to make sense to other people is something completely different. Like, yeah, you know, and it really depends on your ability to speak and your ability to articulate whatever the fuck is in your head. Um. So yeah, and there is some something called uh, disagreeable and or agreeable, you know, a disagreeable person is just, you know, where do we talk about the edges, like a very disagreeable person, this person is not going to shy away from telling the truth, even though it really hurts, you know, and maybe also the people like strangers, people, this person don't actually know. On the other hand, a very agreeable person is somebody that might be putting everybody first, but them just at last, which is also not something that's pretty amazing. You know, it could also put you into a space of of feeling incredibly bad. And I have seen myself as a person that is more or less, you know, quite agreeable, I would say. You know, I'm, I'm also trying to not get into any conflicts anymore. And I'm also kind of, um, yeah, shying away from them, I guess. And something else that I'm, that we are now gonna, gonna talk about um, well, it's basically just also to to figure out what I could be doing, you know, and, and what I might be doing wrong. But so, yeah, this is from the subreddit, from the Jordan Peterson subreddit. Apparently, there is one. And maybe afterwards, since I don't necessarily think that it's going to take so much time, we're always going to go through the subreddit per se. But yeah, suggestions on how to be more disagreeable. Assertiveness training is a thing. What assertiveness is, something that we are then going to go through. But let's just move on with the comments. Be honest when you're disagreeing. If you don't believe something is right, don't do the, oh, I guess you have a point, but like, but like, act. Just say what's on your mind. And if you're right, you're right. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. It's not a fight. Don't make it a my way of thinking is better than yours situation because it is more likely just a case of different understandings. You can joke around while disagreeing and still have lost nothing in a relationship with someone. And I do want to add something there. I guess that what you're saying and how you're saying it are two completely different things and all equally important since, okay, you can disagree, but I can really be an asshole about it. You can really be a fucking asshole about that and be like, whoa, you know, you're so wrong and I'm so right and or vice versa or, or whatnot. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. But um, but yeah, it is, 
it, it really tremendously depends on how you communicate things, you know, what you communicate and how you communicate it. And I mean, once again, which is something that I've been talking about for quite a while, your tonality, you know, your tone of voice, speed, and so on and so on and so on, it really matters. You know, something that's sarcastic could be transforming into something that's really fucking serious. Like, wow, <laughs> you're a dumb asshole. This sounds more sarcastic than, wow, you're a dumb asshole. This is just something completely different. You know, it's it's all about how you deliver the whole thing. And the third point, accept that you could be wrong. Well, yeah, I mean, problems with being wrong. I mean, we all are wrong. I'm wrong quite often as well. But yeah, call a company you do business with and try to argue down your monthly charge. Cell phone, maybe, even if you know it's a lost cause. There is a book recently released called Not Nice by Asis Gasipura. Probably the best book I've ever read on why and how to stop people pleasing. I mean, I I, I definitely am a people pleaser. This is something that I just have to admit and is something that is the case. But on the other hand, I don't know. I don't... Well... I do see different reasons why it is quote-unquote wrong um, when it comes to fulfilling myself maybe and just getting what I want to have, you know? Maybe to to this and about that it is like being too much of a people pleaser and being too much of an, um, you know, focusing too much on what other people want instead of what you would like to have, um, quite obviously to be honest, is not amazing. But on the other hand, I just like to be liked. You know, it is what it is. And um, and I don't know, maybe I just have to try it out. Maybe I have to try um, changing that a bit. You know, which doesn't mean that you should be an asshole or that I should be an asshole to other people and be like, well, um, you know, really disagreeable and really harsh and, and really, um, you know, not empathetic and maybe even narcissistic and and whatnot, but I think that, yeah, I mean, too much of a people pleaser as I've also seen. The funny thing is, to to actually make it clear, I have been in contact with women or girls, however you want to put it, and I have seen that if they are too nice, even though, like, it is very, it's complicated, but I think that when people are too nice, then we lose interest in them. You know, if there is not, if there is no challenge, if there is no, no, um, I mean, if the whole thing is too secure, if you think like, okay, you know, I can have this person, I can have this girl, I can, I can get her very easily, and you also do so, and in the end it is also the case, then I think that mm, the whole pursue and, and, I mean, I think that one loses interest in this person more quickly because of that, but if it is like a process, if it is a journey, if it is a long time that, I mean, if it takes a long time, then, uh, then it is something different. And I've seen it in myself, like, if I felt that everything is secure and then everything is, is easily done and whatnot, then things weren't that interesting. And when I've noticed that it actually is not the case, you know, it, it's not that secure, I, I really felt like maybe losing something, you know, and, and people don't like losing things. It is something that's, well, biologically or... um historically, I don't want to say proven, but it is just the case. I mean, losing things hurts. You know, losing hurts more than gaining is pleasurous. And I, well, I believe that it is the same thing. You know, I believe that, quote-unquote, losing a person or losing the security of, of knowing that this person can easily be attained, I guess. I mean... <laughs> I'm objectifying things and I don't like that, but you know what I mean. And so I think it's the same case for being too much of a people pleaser. Like, um, 
I don't know. Like, yeah, I think it is kind of the same thing, even if uh, it is not about some some love relationship thing, you know, even if maybe, well, hmm, it's a very difficult topic, but I, I think that I have to try it out. I think that I have to try out maybe just, well, not necessarily speaking the truth because this could also really backfire because who the fuck gives a shit, you know? If you really want to speak the truth, then it should also kind of match the whole situation, I think, you know. You could also do it very easily with that, I believe. Uh, Speak the truth and don't back down. If you have a solid foundation for the position you put forth, even if that position is unpopular and even if... What? Even if unpopular with those of higher status or regard do this with respect and manner and people will respect you all the more well i think this is actually a pretty good point i mean he or she also underlines that it is important that you keep an eye on your manners and that you keep an eye on being respectful and of course you shouldn't disrespect people which also comes down to the language that you're using you know not only the tonality but also the language if it is like if people notice that you're verbally skilled or if you're just a fucking whatnot, you know, that is maybe also using a lot of swear words might also not be that intelligent. I know it I think um yeah. It also depends on the person you're talking to. You know, what you can use, what you should be using and whatnot, like yeah. How about being less agreeable? It's not a question of cementing, but someone Uh, Disagreeable might disagree for the sake of disagreeing, and that's not what we want. Alice. Is this the person's name, I guess? No. If you, like me, are too agreeable, agreeable to a fault, try to be less agreeable. When asked to do something, just say no. It's not disagreeing. Don't volunteer, and at times just saying nothing is sufficient to not agree to something. Which, by the way... (laughs) Hmm... Which is something that I also don't necessarily like, like not saying something, not, well, I I, I kind of feel like then ignoring people and I don't like ignoring people. And it's something that I just utterly don't like. I mean, if somebody is saying something, then I assume that, I mean, I think about a person, I think about the other person that I'm talking to pretty often and or, or quite a lot when I'm talking to this person. But yeah, um... The first one is, uh, is and was assertiveness training. And I've also Googled that to just figure out what it is. So what is assertiveness? Have you ever been to a party and found yourself avoiding someone because you didn't know what to say? Have you ever realized after the fact that you had been unfairly criticized or taken advantage of? Are you hesitant to express your thoughts or opinions? Do you find dealing with authority figures difficult? These are examples of situations that involve Assertiveness behavior or assertive behavior. Assertiveness can be defined as communication in which one expresses oneself in a direct and honest manner in the in interpersonal situations while simultaneously respecting the rights and dignity of others. Which I think is, is utterly important. Like it is maybe even the most important thing about the whole the whole question, like being too agreeable or am I too agreeable? Like Yeah, still, even if you are, keep being respectful, keep being empathetic. Like, I don't know, I think you could easily confuse one and the other and and just put them into a a whole machine and think about them as parts of, of one machine, even though it is not the case. So what is assertiveness training? Assertiveness training can be an effective treatment for certain conditions such as depression, social anxiety and problems resulting from unexpressed anger. Assertiveness training can also be useful for those who wish to improve their interpersonal skills and sense of self-respect. Reasons for assertiveness training. Assertiveness training is based on the principle that we all have a right to express our thoughts, feelings and needs to others as long as we do so in a respectful way. When we don't feel like we can express ourselves openly, we may become depressed, anxious or angry, and our sense of self-worth may suffer because we may become resentful when they don't read our minds for what we are not assertive 
enough to be telling them. There are no hard and fast rules of what assertive behavior is. Rather, it is specific to the particular time and situation. In other words, behavior that is approximately assertive for one person in one situation may be either excessively passive or too aggressive for someone else in a different situation. Which, by the way, is something that I've definitely seen. Like, when people are saying something that I would never say, just because it might be a little bit too pushy, it might be a little bit too too aggressive, I notice that the person that they are talking to doesn't feel the same way. You know, and, and I have actually seen that relatively recently. I can't give you the example because I've forgotten, but I felt like, ooh, did you really say that? You know, I would have never said that. And in the end, it didn't change anything. In the end, it, it really... Maybe it, it wasn't actually about something assertive or something that, you know, could be uh, taken as an example for that. But, but it's been something that I would have never said. But in the end, the person did not react in any negative way. I mean, it was completely normal. Like, really interesting. Maybe it's also been kind of a cringy situation. I don't fucking remember. Um, da, 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 da. Finally, assertiveness training is based on the idea that assertiveness is not inborn, but is a learned behavior. Although some people may seem to be more naturally assertive than others, anyone can learn to be more assertive. Although these ideas may sound simple and straightforward, behaving assertively can sometimes be difficult for almost anyone and is often impossible for some people. For this reason, assertiveness training focuses not only on take, talking about the importance of, assert of assertiveness, but also on learning assertive behaviors and practicing these behaviors with the help of a professional therapist. So what is the difference between assertiveness and aggression, which I believe is very important? There's actually a second page. I didn't notice that. But it's uh, amazing. People sometimes confuse assertiveness with aggression, believing that assertiveness training might make them pushy or inconsiderate of others. In fact, assertiveness can be thought of as a middle point between passivity and aggression. In interpersonal situations, passive behavior occurs when you focus on the needs and desires of other person, of another person. I'm sorry, but ignore your own needs and wishes. In contrast, aggressive behavior occurs when you force your own needs on others. Which is not amazing at all. Assertive behavior involves expressing your own way of seeing things, but in a way that is respectful of the other person. Although no one can guarantee that the other person will like what you have, what you do or say, assertive behavior requires that the other person be treated with respect. Assertiveness training can help not only those who tend to be overly passive in interpersonal situations, but also those who tend to be more overly aggressive. Yeah, of course, because if it is all about the middle point, then it is going to be something for the left edge and also for the right edge. Or both edges, whatever. So how is assertiveness training done? Therapists help clients figure out which interpersonal situations are problems for them and which behaviors need the most attention. In addition, therapists help to identify beliefs and attitudes the clients may have developed that lead them to become too passive. Therapists take into account the client's particular cultural context in this process, which I think is very important. Therapists may use a combination of interviews, tests or role-playing exercises as part of this assessment. Therapists help clients understand what assertiveness is and how behavior uh, and how behaving assertively may be helpful. Inaccurate or unproductive attitudes and beliefs about assert assertiveness are discussed once clients once clients understand the importance of assertive behavior for their situation. Therapists help them develop more assertive behaviors. For example, using a technique called behavioral rehearsal. A specific situation is described and then and then assert what and then role played by the client and therapist. Initially, the therapist may play the role of the client and model assertive behavior. The client and therapist then switches roles and the client practices the new behavior. The therapist gives supportive, honest feedback after each role exercise in order to role play exercise in order to help the client improve 
his or her skills. Assertiveness training focuses on both verbal and non-verbal behavior. Verbal behavior is the content of a communication. In other words, what is actually said. This includes expression, expressing requests, feelings, opinions, and limits. Non-verbal behavior refers to the style of con communication. Com and then space, communication. Well, anyway, eye contact, posture, tone, and volume of speech, interpersonal distance, and listening as well. Examples of assertiveness techniques. There are several specific strategies that can be useful when trying to develop assertiveness. One called the broken record technique is useful for situations in which another person will not acknowledge or accept your message. For example, suppose a salesperson is attempting to pressure you to buy something you do not want. You respond, thank you, but I'm not interested in buying anything today. If he or she continues pushing, you simply repeat the same statement, keeping your tone of voice constant without becoming upset. Eventually, the person will be forced to accept your refusal. Another technique, sometimes called fogging, is a method for denying requests or disagreeing with someone while showing them that you nevertheless recognize and respect that person's position. You begin by summarizing the other person's feelings and then explain why I cannot or choose not to comply with that person's request. For example, your husband is warm and asks you to turn down the heat, but you are cold. You respond, I'm sorry, you feel warm, but I've got a s- but I have got on a sweater and long underwear and I'm still freezing. I don't want to turn down the heat anymore. Maybe you could dress more lightly or go for a walk. There are only two of many behavioral techniques that can help develop better assertiveness skills. By the way, uh, the letter thing, I would never say that. I would never ever say that. Because I believe that it is a bit more too aggressive. It's a bit too aggressive. Saying like, okay... It's about you, not about me. I don't know, like it's difficult. In addition to teaching specific assertiveness skills, the therapist can work with clients to help reduce anxiety and worry through systematic desensitization, rational emotive behavioral therapy or other techniques. As worry and anxiety are reduced, people will be more confident and less worried or afraid. Afraid, yeah, afraid. Which, by the way, I think might be the case for me. Like, I would worry way too much about them not liking me. And and maybe... Well, I do have a feeling that I should just try it out. I should just try saying no. I should just try... Giving a fuck about more things, maybe. You know, and not being upset about so many things. and, and, And definitely something else which does not have anything to do with what I've been talking about the whole time. But... Charging yourself and beating yourself up and also beating yourself up for charging yourself and or beating yourself up for feeling a certain way is tremendously idiotic. You know, there's no reason that there's no beneficial, there, there's no benefit in doing that. It doesn't make any sense. But I'm still doing it and it is a fucked up thing. But yeah. Um, we are already 24 minutes in as I'm seeing and therefore I'm gonna end the episode so I wish you the best and hopefully see you soon bye bye